All right, hope everyone's doing wonderful today. Today what we got going on is we're gonna be opening up and checking out the Hako FX888D soldering station. I've heard really good things about this brand, so I got one of their soldering irons because my other one bit the dust on a project I was working on. So we're gonna open this up, check it out, test it out a little bit, and just see what the rave is. Uh, again, this is the Hako FX888D soldering station. I believe it comes in two parts. I think like the power unit itself, and I think there's like the soldering iron holder as well. Kind of cool, like shadow art or whatever on the outside of it. I believe this is the power station. And I think there's like a digital display. Um, I did get the blue and yellow version. I guess there is a silver version as well. I didn't even know that, but that's pretty cool out there. Next thing is let's open it up and check it out. All right, so let's go ahead and open it up. Again, this is the Hako FX888D soldering station. The box is recyclable and uh, just says repackage for shipping on it. It's got a little pull tab right here. Just gonna lift it up. Right off the bat, we're greeted with a little instruction manual. Again, it shows you the parts. You get the actual iron itself. You get like the power station and like kind of the soldering iron holding station. I do like ones that have the holding station because it's always awkward where you want to put the iron once you're done using it. I've, I've used those standalone ones that are just the iron and it's always like, where do I want to set it down without burning a hole in something? Uh, so it's cool, it comes with that. A little bit of information on it kind of tells you how to use it, making changes to the setting, changing temperatures. We'll check that out in a minute. Set that down here. You got the actual iron itself. It's all wrapped up. Very cool. Super sturdy feeling, way nicer than my last one. Really nice flexible cable. Very, very flexible. Wow, very nice. Cool, nice little kind of connection. Makes you think of like a, a guitar amp or something like that. Very cool, so that's the iron itself. Some of this recycled cardboard right here. The packaging does look fully recyclable, which is cool. This is the iron base itself. It comes with one of those like steel wool like wicking stations and the little sponge as well, which is always nice, solid. This thing is actually metal, it's not plastic. Very cool, so you don't have to worry about burning anything or melting anything. It's got like a metal dish inside of here. This is all like cast metal, very nice. Cool, just set that to the side for now. And then the actual power station itself, and I believe that's all that's included in here, yep. And then the actual power station. This thing is pretty heavy for the size of it, honestly. I don't know what it is, maybe like five pounds or something like that. Got the cool little plug right there. You got the up and the enter button. I do remember looking at this, there is only two buttons on it. Uh, I think you have to change it like uh, holding one of them. We'll look at it in a minute. A little power switch on the side, the bottom of it. It's got the brand name on it. 120 volts, I got the 120 volt version, just like ground regular kind of wall outlet power. Very cool. Just a plastic case, this isn't metal, even though uh, the holder is metal, but this doesn't really need to be metal. Just a solid plastic, very silky smooth feeling, got some little heat vents in it in case this thing heats up. Uh, but awesome, little rubberized feet on the bottom. And it's a nice little compact size to be honest, little chunky guy. All right, next thing is, let's uh, check it out a little bit more in depth. So out of the box, this is everything that it comes with. It comes with the actual like power station itself, it comes with the soldering iron holder, fits in there perfect doesn't really feel like it's gonna fall out actually it feels like i have to struggle to get it to fall out which is a lovely relief very heavy base so you don't have to worry about actually knocking it you can see him actually kind of hitting it pretty hard which is very nice a uh, little sponge for like wiping off any solder and i do like how the sponge has little slits in it and I believe those slits are for really getting the nozzle or the tip of it inside of there, which is cool. And obviously the sponge kind of just sits in this little place right here. You can go ahead and wet it. You always want to wet the sponge a little bit. You don't want to just burn the sponge. Uh, it also comes with this sort of, uh, I don't even know what they call it, cleaning wire. It's just like gold and steel wool. Kind of a cool color. And I believe this just gets shoved uh, inside of here. Yeah, just looks like inside of here. Just like that. A delicious golden wire. And that's for just kind of wicking up any extra solder. It's like a sponge will kind of suck it up. Very cool. Awesome. Nice little setup, honestly. Really like the base. I know, I'm pretty sure they sell the power units without the base, but I think the base is, uh, or the soldering iron uh, holder is really nice as well. Does this open up or anything? 
I don't think so. All right, very cool. Let's just undo this little twisty tie right here. It doesn't come with any solder, so you will have to get your own solder, but that's kind of to be expected. But it is cool that it comes with the sponge and the little kind of steel wool pad or, or whatever that's called, the little cleaning wire. Just gonna undo this one right here. Nice little cord, I would say maybe like uh, four feet or something, four or five feet, not really sure how long it is. It's got the Hakka on it right here. This thing feels really quality to be honest. It's got little three digit screen right here. Um, let's just check out the little manual real quick. The Hakko FX888 instruction manual, packing list and part name. So obviously the base itself, the iron, and the little handle uh, holder. Tells you the temperature range, 120 degrees Fahrenheit to like 899 degrees Fahrenheit. Almost at the 900. <laughs> but really you don't need to go much higher than that for what you're doing. I guess it's got a ceramic heating element. And it tells you a little bit like about resistances and stuff like that. The weight of it, uh... The weight of the base is uh, 2.6 pounds without the cord. So it's actually lighter than I thought. I thought maybe like 5 pounds or something like that. Uh, it says that the uh, the actually soldering iron itself is 0.1 pounds. So it's pretty lightweight, honestly. It's like honestly holding like a pencil or something. And I really do like the grip on it. Super nice quality. It looks like this already has a little bit of solder on it. <laughs> cool. And uh, what else does this say? There's a whole huge majority of tip styles. I'm sure if you go through their catalog, you can get all sorts of them, like from fine tips to probably like flat tips to sharp tips to probably anything you can think of, which is pretty cool. I'm just gonna use it for general soldering. Uh, I'm no expert here, I'm just kind of having fun with it. So let's go ahead and plug this thing in and kind of see what happens when we turn it on. Let's see what happens when we plug it in without the soldering iron actually in it. So plugging it in right now, hit the power button, so I guess it's automatically sent to 750 SE, probably uh, check connection. Let's just see what happens when I plug this in. Obviously, it's got only one way it can go in, which is nice, so you don't plug it in upside down by mistake. It's got this little kind of knob at the tip, so that goes facing upwards. In it goes, and you can already see the temperature rising up. It's probably going to hold at 750. I believe it's in Fahrenheit off the bat. I believe you can adjust it, but it would make sense that it's in Fahrenheit because this is 120 volts for like US power outlets. And uh, obviously it's heating up pretty quickly. We're watching it happen before our eyes. And it's almost there. It's climbing very fast. So let's see what we can do. So right there, it's already at the 750 mark. Feel a little bit of heat to it. Obviously, I'm not going to touch it. I have a little bit of solder right here. Let's just go ahead and touch it to it and see if it's ready to melty melt it. So I've got a little bit of solder. Just touch it to it. Yeah, just like that. This thing is hot. Very cool. All right, now that we have the plugged in, let's see if we can adjust the set temperature. I know there's like an adjustment mode and a set temperature mode, which can be a little bit confusing, but we're just gonna adjust the set temperature. So they want you to hold enter for at least a second. And then it's kind of like a an oven clock or a microwave clock. You set one digit at a time. So let's see if we can set it to 475. So I got four, seven, one, two, three, four, five, four, five. And it's going to then Bring it down from 750, which is the default, all the way down to 475. And it honestly, it's probably going to take longer to cool down to the temperature than it would take from it to raise from that temperature to 750. So we're just going to watch it cool down as it reaches that temperature right there. So that's pretty much how you do the set temperature. Not too hard, nothing too crazy about that. It's only going down.
and it's there, 475. And this is in Fahrenheit right now. I believe you can set it to Celsius and Fahrenheit. We'll check that out in a little bit. But right now, I'm gonna probably keep it at Fahrenheit just because uh, that's what I'm used to. The next thing, let's see if we can mess with the adjustment mode. And the adjustment mode is something you're probably never gonna have to do unless you have a way to measure the temperature at the tip of this device right here. Because what it does, say this is set to 475 degrees Fahrenheit, and you go to measure this tip, and when you measure the tip, it only measures at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. For the adjustment mode is, you set this that it reads 400 degrees at the tip, and then this will do some internal calculations and adjust the temperature so that the next time that you read the temperature on the tip of it, it will actually read 475. I hope that makes sense. The adjustment mode is really more of an advanced mode, and you really do need a way to measure the temperature of the tip to even really use it. So honestly, if you're just a casual solder or something like that, you're probably just going to use the set temperature mode, not the adjustment mode. But we're just going to go ahead and check out the adjustment mode anyway. Uh, for the adjustment mode, they want you to hold the up button for at least two seconds, and it's going to go into the adjustment mode. Easy to tell that. Uh, you hit enter, and let's say that I have this set to 475, but it's really reading 450. So it's still a four. I'm gonna change this to 450. Obviously this isn't, I'm just kind of showing you, and reads 450. And then it's gonna adjust the temperature so that now when you read it, it's actually gonna read 475 instead of 450. Uh, the adjustment mode is a little bit confusing, but that is just kind of how you get into it. The next thing is, say that you adjust it and you change the temperatures and you don't like what you did. I'll show you the way to kind of reset this to factory default. You wanna turn it off. You wanna hold the up and the enter button while turning it on. And once it turns on, it's going to see an A flashing, and you can be able to cycle through A and U. A is for Asia, and uh, U is for US, and I don't know what A and I don't know what A2 is, but I guess there's two different versions. Obviously, I just want the U, and it's going to be Fahrenheit. You hit enter, and it's going to set it back to the factory default. It's going to bring it back up to 750. It's going to put the adjustment mode back to what it normally was. So if you ever mess around with the adjustment mode or something like that, turn off the device, hold the up and enter button while turning it on, and click the U or the A depending on where your location is. But really that's the way how you're gonna reset this thing to factory defaults. The next thing is, let's go ahead and solder a little bit. Let's do it. All right, so just to test this real quick, I have a random old circuit board. I'm just gonna remove this piece right here just cause it's a chunky piece and there's a big piece of solder on it. We're gonna remove it, then we're gonna see if we can put it right back on. I uh, have the device set to its normal factory out of the box settings in the US, so 750 Fahrenheit right now. And what we're going to do is not bump the camera. We're going to take my little pliers here. Let's see if I can do this. I'm going to heat it up. See how fast it melts. And that was it. It came off super easy. And we're just going to melt this up again. Set it down in the same spot. Just like that. Um, so very quick. This thing heats up very quick. Obviously the connection of this. It's on there, and it's not going anywhere. Uh, let's just see if we can desolder some other things real quick. What else can I take off of here? Let's see if we can take uh, one of these little blue guys off of here. I might have to use the soldering sucker. I need some like helping hands to keep this stuck down here. And you can see just like that, it just kind of came off itself. Let's see if we can put it back on. So line it up. A little bit of solder. I need to line this up a little better. This thing heats up very quickly. And just like that, <laughs> super crude, but I put it right back on there. So honestly, this solder iron is uh, pretty sweet. It seems to heat up very fast. I like how you can adjust the temperature of it. Um, it's a very good, reputable brand. And I think it'll do very well. Clean off the tip a little bit. 
beautiful. The tip did come with a little bit of pre-solder on it. But this thing is very cool. And I believe you can change the tips on it. You don't want to touch it anywhere up to here. And I believe you can even use different irons with this. I think you can use bigger ones or smaller ones or like an automatic feeding one. So it's pretty cool. Very nice universal. The wire and cable on it seems very flexible. It doesn't feel like it's going to be brittle or anything like that. Almost like a silicone. I'm not really sure. I do like how there's this big metal base here. I'm not, I don't have to worry about this thing tipping over. I mean, this thing is hot right now, but I don't have to worry about it tipping over. The nice little power base on it, there's a little bit of heat on the power base, just a tiny little bit. It makes sense because there's those little fun, like fine little heat grills at the top of it. But yeah, overall, super happy with this cool little Hako FX888D soldering station right here. Anyways, I hope this video was helpful to you. I hope it helps you make a decision if this is the soldering station you want to get. Let me know what you think. just want to say thanks for stopping by. Always solder safely, and I'll catch you on the next one.